Good morning, and welcome to CT Brandon. My name is Angela, and I'm one of the pastors here. Thanks for joining us online today. We are so glad to have you with us. Today we are continuing our series in Advent, and we're going to hear in a moment from Pastor Michael, who will be talking about peace. If you're new with us today, I especially want to welcome you to CT Brandon online campus. We're so glad that you're here, and we would love to get to know you. You can simply click on the New Here link in the description below, and from there, fill out the form, and we'll be in touch with you later this week. It's as easy as that. Make sure to stick around to the end. We have some exciting things happening here at CT that we think you might want to know about. Let's head straight over to Pastor Michael. I want you to think of a moment, uh, a memory, a, a time where you felt an incredible amount of peace. Now, maybe this is something long ago or maybe far away, or maybe it was something that happened yesterday. We all have these experiences where we've experienced peace or we've experienced joy or, hope or something. But as we go through life, different things trigger those emotions. Maybe it was a song, a smell, maybe just the way a color looked and all of these emotions come flooding back, and we remember that time of peace. For me, I'll share a moment where I experienced peace. And this is going to sound a little odd, but years ago, my wife and I, we, we had only lived in apartments and condos, and this was just the life we lived. Then one day, we realized we have two children and two cats, and we're living in a very small condo. So we started house hunting. And it was tedious, and it was awful, and it's never like it is on TV. It's not fun. But then, after all of these monotonous, boring houses, we found this house. And it was the 60s bungalow, and it was sensible, but it had character. Loved the hardwood floors, the fireplace in the living room. It was everything a family home needed to be. But more than that, it had this feeling when you walked in, this feeling of peace. It was hard to explain. And I remember we went in and we were doing the, the house inspection. And usually the previous owners are long gone for a house inspection and then they can come back later. But this elderly couple stayed for the house inspection. They weren't leaving. They were trying to be helpful. And they were wonderful. And I got a chance to meet them and learn a little bit about them. They asked them, and they asked me, what do you do? And I said, well, I'm a pastor. And they said, oh, we love Jesus. And they talked about how they pray and how they read the scriptures and, and throughout their home that this was a priority, welcoming peace, welcoming Jesus, the spirit of the living God into their home. An invited presence of the living God creates tangible peace. It's something you can feel. You can't see it, but you can feel it. It's a peace that, as we say, passes all understanding. Peace from God is something you welcome or you're open to it. You cannot command its existence. You cannot force it through manipulating God through prayer. Peace is just something that happens because it's God, and God is good. How have you looked for peace in your life? What have you done to try and maybe create peace? Maybe it's through a spouse or a boyfriend or a girlfriend. Maybe you thought you'd create peace in your life by having children. Maybe you thought you'd create peace in your life by having a bigger house or something at the lake. These don't create peace. We've been looking for peace and trying to find ways to bring peace into our lives since the very beginning. The, the cradle of humanity in the book of Genesis to the, the developing and growing of God's people through the rest of Scripture. Even the, the story of God itself, it, it displays our desire to find peace. I think of the words of the prophet Isaiah that that we have read through our Advent readings here at the, at the church. And, and the words of the prophet Isaiah, he, he speaks of a future peace. He speaks of a peace that needs to come. 
He called out for peace for generations to generations to come and rest on God's people. Then we, we understand as Jesus comes to earth through the incarnation that peace came with him. Christ walked on earth, the embodiment of peace, the, the, the character of peace in God. If God had skin on as he walked, brought peace. Now, peace is a mystery. You can't quantify it. You can't create it. You can't, you can't force it into a box. Our, our faith itself is, is much like that. It is a mystery. We believe that, that Christ has died. We believe that Christ is risen. We believe that Christ will come again. And it is that last piece of the Christian mystery that it really signifies what forever will be. When Christ comes again, he brings peace with him. It is a forever peace. But until then, our job as humanity is to welcome Jesus is to welcome peace and create places like that house. Or for many of you, as you watch this, you've created peace in your living room by inviting the presence of God there. Isaiah used his prophetic imagination to remind people of peace and to declare the kingdom of God. What if that peace is distant in your life? What if you maybe need to realize that you're in the right place then? If peace is distant for you, you can maybe sense it, feel it, it's over there. Know that Jesus is in the room and peace is coming after you. There's a, an old Christmas carol. Hark the herald angels sing. Glory to the newborn king. Peace on earth. And mercy mild, God and sinner reconciled. The peace of Christ. When we sing that, we declare Christ's peace. The peace he carried with him. Later in life, the disciple Matthew, he would record the words of Jesus in the Bible. And he recorded this one area where Jesus said, Hey, all you who are weary and heavy laden, come to me. I'll give you peace. That is amazing because Jesus, the Son of the living God, God himself, God incarnate, says, I'll give you that rest. I will give you that peace. Just come to me. This Christmas season, I encourage you, come to Jesus. He is the answer of our inner peace. He is the answer for peace in the world around us. Jesus is so much more than the cliche of the reason for the season. He is the king of peace. He is the prince of peace. He is the prince of our hearts. Would you pray with me this morning? Father, we thank you for how amazing you are. We thank you that you sent your son. We thank you that you rose again in Christ. And we just declare today that peace come to our living rooms. We declare today, Lord, that peace come to our hearts, that peace comes to our world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thanks for sticking around to the end. If you're new here, we would love to get to know you. If you haven't done so yet, please click the I'm New link in the description below. We would love to get in touch with you later this week. Church is so much more than just a day or an event that we do together. It's a community of people supporting one another, and we would love for you to be part of that community. So we really would love for you to connect with us. Another way that you can connect and keep up to date with what's going on at the church is through social media. You can follow us on both Instagram and Facebook. And if you missed out a service and you want to check it out, you can head over to our YouTube channel and you can watch them back later. Next Sunday is Christmas Sweater Sunday, so make sure whether you join us in person or online to wear one if you have one. It's so much fun seeing all the creative sweaters out there. Another thing happening later this month is our Christmas Eve services on December 24th. This is one of our favorite services as we spend time reflecting on the hope we have in the birth of Christ and the light that he brings to the world. 
There will be no Sunday morning service that day, so we would love for you to join us in person for either the 4 o'clock or the 6 o'clock service, or we'll see you online. For more details on these events and everything else happening here at CT, please go to our website, ctbrandon.com. Here at CT, we believe giving is an expression of worship. It's a way that we say, God, we trust you. We are so thankful for your generosity here at CT. If you're new here, please do not feel compelled to give in any way. For those who did come prepared to give, the best way is to e-transfer info at ctbrandon.com. If you'd prefer another method, please visit our website, ctbrandon.com, and click on the Give tab. These funds support everything we do here at CT, things like running our amazing youth and kids programs, helping local organizations here in Brandon and Westman, um, helping those in need, supporting the, both local and global missionaries, uh, things like the Angel Tree program you may have heard about last week, and so many more. In closing, may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him, so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Thanks again for joining us today, and I pray that you feel God's peace surrounding you this week and throughout the upcoming Christmas season. Have an amazing week.